Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome to A Million Movies. Now, if you love movies like I do, you've undoubtedly picked up that there are some cliche moments that movie makers use over and over again. For example, we've all seen the hero who walks away from an explosion like nothing's going on behind him. The cop who's ordered to turn in his badge. Or the character you think is dead, but surprise, they're still alive. These moments are called tropes, and over time, movie fans have even given some of them really clever names. There's Disguised in Drag, The Accidental Dance Craze, hey, it's the African and the always classic Dies Wide Open. And occasionally a movie does a trope so well that the name for that trope is forever linked with that film. So hang on, because this week I'm going to take a look at the 1969 classic Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and the trope that movie helped define, the Bolivian Army ending. So stick around. Alright, fair warning that since we're dealing with movie endings this week, there's obviously going to be some spoilers. But let's start by defining what makes up the Bolivian Army ending. And for that, I'm going to head over to tvtropes.org. Their definition is that it's a trope that happens at the end of a movie that occurs when the main characters face seemingly insurmountable odds, which, for once, the main characters seem unable to surmount. And there's another critical component that must also be met for a scene to qualify as a Bolivian Army ending. And that's for everything about the story to indicate that the character's destruction is inevitable. But frustratingly, the audience doesn't actually get to see that destruction happen. In fact, unless the story continues in a sequel, we can never be totally sure if the characters survived or not. That's it. It needs to be at the end of a movie. We need to believe that there's no way the characters could possibly survive. And we can't be shown what happens to them. That's the Bolivian Army ending. Since the trope is named for the final scene in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, that movie obviously checks all three boxes. Alright, here's the setup. Butch and Sundance hijack the payroll from a Bolivian mining operation, and then head into a small town to plan their next move. While they sit at a small cafe, the boy hitching up their horses recognizes the brand on one of the mules carrying the stolen payroll and he alerts the local police. A gunfight starts, and even though Butch and Sundance pick off several of the local police officers, they're quickly wounded and running low on ammunition. They take cover in the building as what appears to be the entire Bolivian army descends on this town surrounding them. With no other options, they decide to make a run for the horses to try and escape. And as they exit the building, we see the final shot of the movie. So, end of movie? Check. Is there no possible way our heroes can survive? Check. Do we actually not get to see if they survived or not? Well, thanks to director George Roy Hill's freeze frame, that's also a check. The result is the archetypical Bolivian army ending. But Butch and Sundance isn't the only movie to use this trope. Some classic examples that follow the Butch and Sundance model include Thelma and Louise driving off the cliff. Garp being airlifted out after being shot by an Ellen Jamesian in the world according to Garp. And Bruce Lee surrendering to a firing squad of Japanese policemen at the end of Fist of Fury. Now some Bolivian army endings tweak the format a little. One of my favorites is The Grey. At the end of this movie, Liam Neeson's character is the last survivor from a plane crash in the Alaskan wilderness. He knows he can't go on much further, and as he's planning out his next move, the wolves begin to surround him. And he realizes he's walked right into the middle of the wolf's den. Now as the alpha wolf makes his way towards Liam, Liam takes a last look at a photo of his wife, and he has to decide if he's going to give up or if he's going to fight. He makes his decision and starts taping airplane bottles and a knife to his hands before the final battle begins. And just as he's ready to attack, we fade the black. Classic Bolivian army ending, right? 
but if you stay to the end of the credits, we get a little more insight. For just a second or two, we see Liam's character lying with his head on the wolf. Both are wounded, both are alive. What we don't know is which one of them ultimately survives, or really if either one of them do. Another twist on this trope comes in one of my favorite horror movies, The Cabin in the Woods. This movie takes the Bolivian army ending to a whole new level because instead of just putting the main characters in peril, Dana and Marty decide to put all of humanity at risk. They make a decision not to complete the rites to appease the ancient ones. Instead, they sit back, share a joint, and await their fate, the destruction of the world by evil gods. Sometimes a Bolivian army ending can close with a scene where the danger isn't as decisive or immediate as we've seen in more classic versions of the trope. In the movie It Follows, for example, Jay and Paul think that they've killed the entity that has been stalking them. But as they walk down the street holding hands on their way to what should be a happy ending, we see over their shoulders that a figure is walking behind them. Is that the entity still stalking them, or is it just someone else who happens to be walking through the neighborhood? The point is that we don't know because right at this moment, the movie ends. Not all Bolivian army endings end with such a dark or fatalistic final scene. A recent example of this is in A Quiet Place, which takes the trope and flips it by ending the movie on a more hopeful note. The family has discovered that high frequency sounds weaken and drive the creatures away. Seeing the creatures approaching on closed circuit televisions, the family powers up their amplifiers and prepares to fight, knowing that they now have the advantage. And sometimes the Bolivian army ending doesn't even have to do with a violent death at all. In the original version of the Italian job, after an incredible heist involving the definitive Mini Cooper car chase scene, the gang has gotten away with the gold. But as their bus swerves through the Italian Alps, it skids off the road, leaving the back end of the bus and the gold teetering over the edge of a cliff. Now, it's possible that the gang could get out of the bus before it goes over the cliff, but then they'd lose the gold for sure. With the rest of the crew weighing down the front end of the bus, Michael Caine crawls towards the goal to try and bring it back from the edge. And that's when Michael Caine looks back at the guys and delivers this classic line. Hang on a minute, lads. I've got a great idea. Leaving the audience guessing exactly what that great idea is and how the crew can all survive and keep the gold. The Bolivian Army ending has become such a common way to end a movie that more modern films are even playing off on the trope to get a laugh. A great example of this is in Shanghai Noon. Roy and John have just defeated the main villains, but similar to the situation Butch and Sundance found themselves in, they're trapped in a building surrounded by a gang ready to kill them. Before heading out, they pump each other up, say their goodbyes, and charge out to fight only to find that the gang there to kill them has already been captured without a fight by a friendly tribe of Indians. And one final call out, I love when movies reference other movies, and the Bolivian Army ending got a great shout out in the original Beverly Hills Cop. During the climax, while pinned down by Victor Maitland's gang, Detective Rosewood stops to tell Taggart how this moment reminds him of a scene from a famous movie. You know what I keep thinking about? You know the end of Butch Cassidy? The Redford and Newman are almost out of ammunition. The whole Bolivian army is out, out in front of this little hut. Really? I'm gonna make you pay for this. Well, those are just a few examples of the Bolivian army ending. If you have an example from one of your own favorite films, please let me know in the comments below. And until next time, as always, thank you for joining me here on A Million Movies.